folks, welcome inside the Parisi Palace, high above 3773's Broadway. This is a live edition of the Jake Feinberg Show. Comedy on Power Talk, please go to our website, powertalk.live. Download our free app and stream all of our live local programming, including Solomon on Blast, the Jim Parisi Show, and yours truly, the Jake Feinberg Show. Can't thank you enough for making this part of your day today, and it, without further ado, I want to bring in a cat. A melodic improviser, somebody who had the rudiments beat in, dr- drilled into them by his father and mother uh, from a very early age. Uh, he collaborated immensely with his brother O'Teal as well in the Rock Creek Park region of Washington, D.C., and uh, has been a prolific uh, multi instrumentalist on the jam band tour with the Tedeschi Trucks Band and with a myriad of other of other cats and uh you know he's uh he's been on my radar for some time and uh now we get a chance to hang kofi burbridge welcome to the jake feinberg show thanks for having me thanks for having me jake it's great to connect with you man um i you know i just wanted to ask you you know you strike me as somebody like in today's world uh that you know just follow me here you know you you would have all you'd have perfect pitch you would be uh, decorated have a lot of facility on your instrument in today's world if kofi burbridge was 15 years old you'd be playing in your room mostly but that was not the case when you were coming up in dc because the culture and more importantly the music which is part of the culture was on the street and i want you to talk about the street scholar approach that you had because you clearly had all the other technical and facility, your ears were big, but it was the idea of actually taking that and and co-joining it with the street. Absolutely. I actually, uh, uh, if, if the story, if I can keep the story straight, (laughs) um, you know, I went to North Carolina school of the arts at 14 um, so from that time period on through at which had a high school, which actually had a junior high school, high school and college program, uh, there weren't many students, maybe up to uh, 800 at the time. So we're talking 76, uh, the orchestral side of things really, uh, became dominant in my life at, at that period, that time period. And uh, so when I got out of school, out of college, uh, I would say that was around uh, 81. Uh, I got out early, just a certificate uh, in music, and uh, joined back up with O'Teal. O'Teal really is the catalyst for uh, me getting back into, you would say, the D.C. scene. Mm. Uh, a lot of uh, musicians out of Langley, Virginia, McLean, Virginia, uh, Maryland, Topeka, Maryland. Uh, a lot of a lot of those areas, we were trying to connect with people there, and uh, we knew musicians from there, uh, from Northeast, Northwest DC, Southwest DC, all that the entire area, and uh, a lot of work was in Georgetown. Uh, I would say. Uh, uh, some some performances every once in a while at Blues Alley, uh, things like that. Um, really, I was following O'Teal at that point and uh, meeting a lot of the musicians that he connected with on the scene at that time, uh, which, which really involved a lot of hands-on, hey, let's jump in the car, uh, let's drive across town to Virginia, and let's actually physically set up and start playing. Um, uh, it, it wasn't so computer based at the time, obviously. It was more. It was. I mean, and, uh, you would you would not even necessarily have a uh, a gig lined up. You would just begin playing on the street. We just wanted to play. We just <laughs> wanted to play most of the time, and yeah. so you know, it was a lot of uh, it was a lot of house parties. I would call those house jams. I mean, you know, we would set up at twelve and play till twelve. And uh, it, it was a uh, lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, days, yeah, I, I mean, we're going to, you know, I, I, I want to be clear. I, I'm looking to, to, to go back to when you played with Donald Byrd when you were 12 years old. 
Right, right. <laughs> uh, I actually am trying to remember those days. Uh, but that was, I remember that was Howard University. Um, and I have to uh, uh, make a major uh, uh, introduction to uh, my parents, of my parents. Sure. They were the ones that actually set a lot of these things up, uh, you know, while we were eight and 10 and 12 and 14. And uh, by the time we were 12 and 14, we, we pretty much were making our own musical decisions. Uh, but there was, a, there was a handful of acting at the time in this. And so between both worlds, our parents were very hands-on and, and, you know, bringing the right uh, influences, artistic influences into our lives. And, and so uh, the thing with um, Donald Byrd was one of those. And, um, and he actually uh, set up a performance at uh, uh, our university at that time to, to do uh, just a, an afternoon, you know, uh, session. And uh, uh, that, that, actually really was the beginning for me to actually feel like, Hey, you know, I can do something with this. I really feel like, you know, if I, if I take the right steps, you know, and uh, just keep playing and, and stay in tune, uh, maybe I can make something out of this for my life. And, uh, yeah. yeah. What, what, what could you talk about some of the bandstand stuff that, that made you think that was a, because here's the thing, like I talked to, uh, David T. Walker, the guitar player, a couple weeks ago, and then uh, Charles Neville. Mm -hmm. And those guys are big believe. Like, well, David T. was talking about Gene Page, who who used to do the 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 music for Barry White, and he would just he said that Gene would just bring in chord uh, chord charts. There were no arrangements, and uh, Charles was the Charles is the same way. Uh, he doesn't want to have it too arranged, and I don't think Bird really. Could you talk about what Bird? did that made you think that you might actually have a chance to become a professional musician? Well, at the time, you know, I had never done a performance on that level. Uh, there was an opportunity uh, that the National Endowment of the Arts had set up uh, actually to get a chance, an opportunity to play with Ron Carter. you got to remember, I was still 12 and 14 <laughs> at the time. So I wasn't making my own decisions back then. Right. Uh, you, you know, I, I, they they saw what I wanted to do, and uh, and so they trusted it enough. My parents, you know, enough to to follow suit and to try and help help guide that in the, in the right way. So uh, so yeah, I, I would say that. Um, you know, when I did the performance with Donald, we set it up. We, I, th I think we set up actual tunes. I can't remember what the tunes were. Uh, but I remember that it was just going to be a, a head-on, uh, you know, um, um, playing a few tunes, get a set list done, get something in, in order, and to knock it out like that. But just knowing who Donald Bird is and knowing his style at the time, uh, what he was trying to do with the music at the time. He was certainly trying to bring uh, bring in and open up the door to uh, younger artists uh, of, of that time period. And so, uh, you know, I think he was going with whatever was coming out at the, at, at, from from those musicians, and then uh, and then trying to structure it later on. It, it's primarily improvisation it, it really is you, you know you want to have the freedom to allow what you've been thinking about to actually come on out and and uh and then you know put it into a, a, a cohesive sentence uh, or at least shout it out you know with, <laughs> with the right emotion i did and, no, and you'll and you get it you'll get it that way too you know even if the words are all jumbled up you'll get the emotion and uh and so, you, yeah, yeah, no. He, so, so, um, uh, talking to Kofi Burbridge here on the Jake Feinberg Show live on on Power Talk. Uh, so, uh, Eddie Henderson went to Howard University, and when he got there, uh, one the cat that was running the music department used to chase him out of the building because he was playing jazz, and there was no jazz <laughs> curriculum. 
And I actually think that like you were sort of on this uh, glide path with your brother where, I mean, academia had not fully sunk its tentacles into musicians. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer that vocabulary music cannot grow only within academia. It mainly grows on the bandstand with a unit that is together for long periods of time, like the M1 Dishi band or, you know, the, any, any kind of band that can stay together. But with your parents, being that it was, uh, even though you were younger, um, were they, like, in doctor, putting you guys, were they collecting Folkways records from African High Life records? Uh, what I'm trying to get at is this idea, um, you, were you part of this group Contact Africa with Kojo Bates? Kojo Baden, now not Kojo Bates. Kojo, Kojo Baden. Baden, thank you. Okay, thank you. I mean, yeah, what I'm trying Kojo to get Baden. at is this: this, this is this is yeah. very mis- this is the, I want to get into the Sufi and the mysticism of the music. I, I, you know, I recognize now that we live in this time where they call it the jam band circuit, but I, I want to go back to the mysticism of the music. Ultimately, how your parents. In, really, before you started, quote unquote, you said it a couple times. Made your dis- be able to make your own decisions. How you really discovered improvisation from the motherland? Absolutely. Um, my name is Kofi. Otil's name is Otil. We have two sisters, Leilani and Adero. Our parents are Carol and Bill. They're from Bronx, New York. I was born in the Bronx. The rest of the family was born in D.C. We're in Northeast, primarily, you know, give or take D.C.'s location. Uh, they were, uh, they they were prime. Uh, they were on top of and and influenced and fired up by culture. And. This is, we're talking 61 is when I was born. Okay. Mm. So, so they already were headstrong about uh, receiving any information about Africa, uh, anything that had to, to do with its influence on African Americans. And, uh, and so they wanted to open that up to us. Uh, seeing that we were so hyped on the music, and this is the secondary part that I'll try to get to briefly. My dad was really into collecting records. Oh, I love music it. fired him up. Is that cat still? He, is he still with us? By the way, he is still with us. Both are still with us. Was he? Was he, he at, was, cannot, he at Bird, was he at Birdland? By the way, did he must have gone to Birdland a lot? Uh, I even think that he may have snuck. A tape recorder into uh, Birdland at the time. He was that kind of guy, and uh, so we're, oh, we, we want to restore some tapes. Absolutely. Oh, we ab- need, no, actually. because I'm I'm producing a I'm producing a I'm producing a documentary on Stan Getz, and Getz was okay. at the original opening of Birdland in 1950. If you were born in '61, there's no no doubt right. there's no da- doubt your dad was recording Lester Young and those cats. Big, we got to get oh, those yes. tapes going. Oh, yes. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, that, yes. So because it was he, culture he, personified at that point. Well, they wanted to open our minds up to you know to to the rest of life instead of just this American way, and uh, they want to, wanted to include it since we were here, since we are here. Mm-hmm. Uh, they wanted to they they wanted us to have a broader perspective of uh, what we were involved with and who we are. And so by collecting all this music over time, over time, over time, really the way it it sunk in was that we just started gravitating to his records. They were lined up on the wall, lots of vinyl, vinyl at the time, no CDs, no, no tapes, no digital files. It was old school. It was uh, album covers, which really was part of the attraction. And then uh, we heard the music, and and uh, or, or or many times the other way around. Um, there was um, all kinds of music that he collected. I mean, from Fela Kute to the Impressions to uh, to Beethoven to the Rite of Spring. 
back to John Coltrane, and then we were bringing in Cool and the Gang, and I mean, I mean, it was, was a smorgasbord. Kinds, this is unbelievable. That is, all kinds full, of music. it's all music, yeah. man. It's, he was from the Duke Ellington School. But our dad opened this up to us, you know. Our, our dad really was the one that that uh, that was the gateway for us to get into everything, and he made us feel like we could, you know, be a part of all of this. Which, in turn, is hey, you can be a part of all people. Uh, because music is people. That, that's what it's all about. Um, you you hear uh, Afro-Cuban music, you're not thinking Austria, okay, and vice versa. So it's about people, and at least to me it is. And so we would hear this music, even though we didn't know these cultures or know many of the, cult- many of the people from those cultures at the time, we're hearing the music, and the music is just, draining us so we're just in awe of the whole thing wow. and uh and that is is primarily what opened our minds up to um to pursuing uh what was what, what we wanted to get into and basically it was everything i mean you know we really dug everything i still dig uh, all types of music it's um i want to keep it that way too you know i want to keep it global um uh, that that's that's what I think uh, you know. That's where we feel that we get the most knowledge about what's happening, or what, uh, about all of history actually, and what's happening today. Could you could you uh, uh, could you could you give an example of what you mean? Uh, let's see. You know, uh, there was, uh, or you know, even even better, know, even better. Could you could re, could you relate it to? I have to believe that. Uh, maybe you could relate it to diaspora as an example, or maybe if that's possible, uh, the music of the uh, of diaspora, because you mentioned this thing, America, the American way, and a lot of people will not understand. My, you know, I'm a Gen Xer. Millennials will not understand. They'll say, "What are you talking about? Jazz was in- invented in America, and you know, what, what's the big deal?" But actually, no, the motherland is where the instruments were made and the universities came. Absolutely. So, so, so I mean, can start, it, yeah, go ahead. We can start with the banjo, really. The banjo is an African instrument. Most right. people uh, do not uh, do not know this. They just simply don't know it. Uh, but it does come from there. Othiel really has uh, been uh, very vocal about that. He's, he's really been picking up on the banjo and making it like a serious, <laughs> serious impression. The guy can play the hell out of the band. Dude, he told me a story. Okay. He told me about he going is, there. He he, he went there. He, with yeah. The boy the, the, yeah. the boy in the banjo, man. He was there with his wife and yeah. and playing yeah, he's, he's Exactly. You know, he's, he's, exactly. Go ahead. Yeah. So well well so you know, uh, um like like I said, America is is the idea of America for me is um uh, all people. Uh, all inclusions of people um, to have all these different cultures in one spot to be living together. You can't help but hear the music that comes from it. So, you know, you will make friends everywhere. Everyone will make friends <laughs> from all different walks of life. And consequently, the music is going to melt. And, and so when we hear uh, jazz, jazz also is, is uh, uh, you know, the, the word itself uh, has not been, uh, it hasn't been truly defined. I totally uh, agree. Because, I totally agree. Because because it's just, you know, it goes from here, it goes to there. Uh, did it come from marches? Did it come from the church? Did it come from blues? Did it come, it came from all of those experiences. And so, to just call it jazz is to just almost shove it to the side, and that's uh, and, and that's been one big argument that uh, we, I think most musicians uh, have been dealing with. Um, but but it just just the inclusion of so many different cultures to come together and then to all of a sudden make this one music. It's it, that that really has been the focus of what I've tried to pursue. Um, with the basis of it really coming from Africa, from 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 the beats, from the roots of the beats, 
and uh, if, if we're going to label it jazz. Well, I, and um, it, I mean, that the other word, maybe not push it to the side, but I think that word is just too confining. It, it's just too confining a word for the kind of breadth and the space and the and the and the rhythmic foundations of it. I mean, I almost just call it melodic improvisation, absolutely. you know, but I, I mm-hmm. the, you mm-hmm. you kind of you were kind of on the cusp of like the going into a Woolworths and like seeing like, you know, Blackwood Brothers and then Gary Bart's right behind it. You know, it was kind of pre right. you know, before exactly. then. But my I came in Tower Records. It was like jazz and then R&B and rock and it got all stratified. Got and to you. me, that's when the vocabulary to me. Got and now I look to you guys like you and O'Teal and, and the cats on the scene to like, uh-huh. like like to keep building. What in your mind? What is um, or you know how? What is the best way in your mind to develop new vocabulary, a new language in music? How do you do that in your own world with your peeps? I think I think that that's an ongoing. I think that's life itself. I mm. think that's something. We really should uh, allow to happen instead of uh, to have so much control over. Mm. Uh, because what really is going on is that there's, there's people being born every day. I just saw a video of a one-year-old really keeping good time on the drums. <laughs> and then he tried to sing. And I said to myself, you know, this, this is just ongoing. You never know what's going to happen with life itself. So when ears and a brain notices uh, anything like this, like sound or even visuals, you know, whatever it is that, that sparks, you know, the brain to, to, you know, become, come up with ideas and to have to put it out, i.e. whether it's, it's, it's coming up with a new idea or whether it's copying it, both play the role of, getting to know one another and getting to know um, the, the, the music itself. And um, so for me, for me, I guess my basic answer would be just keep playing. Just keep playing with people. Just keep playing with as many different people as possible. That really is the key. Uh, not to be so stuck into one thing unless you you know, you're growing and you're, 30 and you're 40 and you're 50 and then okay hey i kind of see what i want to do okay but before then i think it's exploratory and it can be what you want after that but definitely in the beginning stages it should be a wide open door and then for for uh for the player to go ahead and, and just jump in the water you know so to speak was the yeah. was the um <clears throat> Was there a time, could you point to a time earlier in your career when, uh, I don't know if you pushed yourself is the right word, but where you went, got yourself into a situ- musical situation that you were not used to, but it, it wound up really stretching your ears out, where your ears grew the most? Um, the, wow, that's, that's a great question because it all depends on, it all comes down to, uh, first it comes down to what I uh, for instance, I came up as, as quote unquote jazzer, playing mostly jazz, uh, playing a lot of funk. Okay. Where are the tapes uh, of this? I need the tapes of this stuff immediately. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like that. Like seriously, some of this stuff is is it, you are in this like it's like post Blackbirds, but then before. <laughs> like glam rock took over, you know, but I mean, it was just like, right, I mean, this right. it is, I, what, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm actually not, I'm being serious. I just, I'd love to hear the jazz and the funk, but that was your bag. But then how did you get a bigger bag? When did you push yourself out? You know? Well, well, you know, be, well, once it came to, uh, I gotta give it, I gotta give the ball back to O'Teal, yep. you know, while I was in school, uh, we were both checking everything out, but I think our influences went to certain directions. And O'Teal definitely was was more in leaning to more towards the rock side of things, whereas I was getting this whole classical uh, orchestral uh, training. Uh, and and when I remember a moment where uh, the biggest moment for me to answer your question, when I came. Uh, back from a road trip uh, in Atlanta. This is 
when I was living uh, in 94, I would say 93, 94. I had just come off of the R&B scene working with uh, After Seven uh, that uh, was on tour with Whitney Houston and mm. MC Hammer. Mm. And uh, that even uh, bought us uh, uh, a two-month uh, tour with uh, The Whispers. Completely R and B, total right? soul okay. R and B. I love that. Completely the whispers, R&B. the whispers. Man. Uh, yeah, the um, whispers was uh, the whispers of Whitney Houston really, really attracted my attention sure. naturally because it was for me. It was it was more musical. Um, MC Hammer was 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 more uh, like I don't want to call it Broadway, but it was. It was drama. It was theatrical with dancers all over the place. It was, you <laughs> Vaud, know, Vaud, I mean, almost like a new Vaud, it, it Vaudeville. It was a real kind of, band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a, a, a real band sequence and a dat machine going at the same time. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so it, it really, I learned a lot there. But uh, when I joined the Aquarium Rescue Unit, that's when things had really changed for me because. They were on such a different. They were on such a different wavelength, including really once again, all kinds of music, and really even more if they could, if the time allowed, if, you know, blah blah blah. But these guys, uh, they they completely went for it, and and uh, so that was, I, I think, the beginning of a challenge there, and then all of a sudden. Uh, joining the uh, Derek Trucks band, which was once again, you know, it was it, it wasn't jazz, it wasn't something that I was used to playing. It wasn't um, it wasn't classical music. It wasn't uh, orchestral. You know, it wasn't anything like that. Things that I was used to playing most of the time, just for my life. And so, you know, I. You know, I still feel like in many ways I'm rock 101, you know. I've been there. Even though a lot of my keyboard friends in school, they turned me on there to Keith Emerson, Jan Hammer, you know. The, uh, uh, oh, man, the, you yeah, know, the guy, the Tommy. I grew up with, yeah, the Tommy. I grew up with Chick Corea and, and Herbie, of course, you know. And, and, and that, that, that was a world, that was a serious world for me at the time. But when you leaned over towards Keith Emerson, and that was new for me. And so, you know, uh, I, I, it, it's timing, I guess, is timing of, of when we get into things. And, and uh, you know, that, that made the biggest difference. And so consequently, and, and also a part, part of the challenge of any of this is uh, learning the tunes. You learn the tunes, you learn the material from, from where things come from. And then you get a better idea of, you know, the feel, you get a better idea of the, the, the ambience of it, the, the pace, you know, the, and then then you just eventually get into the life of it, you know, and and, and what it was like to just do shows like that, and the crowd, and the crowd is the other half, major, major, major portion of of the music is the crowd, it's the people that actually come to see it. Right. I mean, you know, it, it, it's it's just different types of people from everywhere. That I get off on that. That that fires me up. That's a, a, a big experience for me uh it's a necessary experience for me to 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 see different kinds of people all the time and and things they gravitate towards you know well I, I, this is yeah. i want you to go because uh, this is kind of where the rubber meets the road for the jake feinberg show is uh this idea of you know you have uh i'm going to read you this quote from barry melton who is uh you know the fish in country joe and the fish uh-huh. he, he said uh-huh. um he said to me, uh, psychedelics were legal in 1966, and when you mix that with a little folk music and an idea of what jazz is, and you mix that with folk music, you have, in essence, an improvisational zone in rock. Now, that's what I'm getting at with Tedeschi Trucks is that they come across as a singer-songwriter burning blues band. But there is... Can you talk about that improvisational zone within what is considered blues rock that gets to an idea, the idea of jazz. Very, very interesting. Um, I remember a bluegrass band 
that used to come to our school uh, in in the North Carolina uh, School of the Arts, and uh, they would play. I guess this went on for a month, and then and then it was over. Uh, every Saturday, they would set up outside Mm -hmm. not in the auditorium where (laughs) quote unquote all those performances are supposed to happen blah 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 and uh and and uh and they were so on point bluegrass being bluegrass okay i mean you gotta have it down if you're playing that music um and for the life of me i couldn't it was the first realization that what was going on was really a, a an overlay of sound of style and consequently you know i take it to the next level an overlay of cultures um i i uh, the the music would go from so many two five ones and from here to there and it was moving so fast then I said, "Look, I'm going to pull my piccolo out here. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get up with these guys and sit in and play." Oh. And I found myself feeling like I was playing bebop. It was, with it was so fast, it was so fast, right? And it worked. It completely worked. Wow. And I, and I said, "Wow, this is, this, this is different." Now, you know, along the way, I could tell that I was playing more bebop and they there were actual bebop moves and then there were actual bluegrass moves and and so that also it, it, even in uh answering your last question that was another big educational uh side of things another challenge for me was to to be involved with that from time to time you know i was never in a band but whenever it was you know offered or whenever the opportunity came to sit in with groups like that, I would snatch it because it just felt so damn good. It, it was just, uh, I, I had to, uh, uh, I had to at least, you know, show that side of things, show that side of the music uh, to actually, um, you know, to, to make that connection. And so uh, for me, that, that, that was one example of how, those two uh, worlds work out. Yeah. All right. This is this, do you. Um, when did you first? Uh, I mean, were you? Do you have any memories of playing in the Bronx, or do you just? When was the first time you were actually like? I, I like, was two when I moved out. I was two when I moved out. That's just the first place. Uh, now we we visited often, but we didn't get to hang much. You didn't get that. That's mostly right. where cousins and aunts and and, and uh, our relatives lived, and uh, so we really didn't get a chance to put our foot into the Bronx and get to know the Bronx. Although uh, I am hip to uh, a lot of the, the the culture that came out of there. One big big thing for me. Uh, was learning the history of uh, the the actual gang uh, life of, of then, and this is pre, um, I would say, um, uh, pre African Bambada. But African Bambada has damn near everything to do with the he's part of the aftermath of what was happening with uh, with with you know Robert Moses. Uh, you know, putting this road through the boroughs and people dispersing, and then all of a sudden it just went down. It the Bronx just went completely down, and uh, and then you know the people trying to survive in those conditions afterwards. Um, that 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 was that was a, a heavy thing to learn. Well, I mean, uh, could you just for just, just for my audience and myself? I mean, can you? Uh... Are, are you saying that when the gangs came in, that's when things went down? No, 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 no. That's when things changed. Uh, life was hard. Life Can you talk about picking pr- ass at that yeah. point? And 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 the one thing that stopped the violence was the music. That that was another very extremely heavy thing to learn is that after there were peace talks, I don't know if too many people are hip to 
uh, the movie Warriors. I think there are a lot of the audience may be hit, hit to that, but in case they're not, um, Warriors was done in the 70s. Is this right? Is this correct? Yeah, I think I, I you think might be was, right about that, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's actually based on a true story uh, about gangs and the gang violence in, in, in the Bronx in particular. Okay, uh, uh, it was done nine years after a, a similar event went down, the true story. Uh, went down where there was a guy who came up and tried to give peace talks about, uh, you know, stopping all violence. And he uh, was killed on the spot right there. And and, and the movie Warriors kind of portrays this in, in, in so many different ways. But that, in effect, is, you know, give or take, a very, very true story. Uh, what happened after that, um, was that a lot of the gangs, most of the gangs realized that, look, you know, we're, we're coming down on each other just trying to survive, but we really should be putting our heads together and, 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 and fighting in a different way. And so what opened the door was, uh, was uh, dancing. And it was street dancing. And I mean, it was, you know, you know I, I'm losing the word for it now. Uh, but, but I mean, just like twirling on your hands, twirling on your head, twirling on, I mean, all of that, <laughs> right. that became the new competition as well as Curtis Blow, uh, guys like that being involved and African Barbada and so many, 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 many others. Um, uh, that, that was one of the most enlightening things that I, I learned about the Bronx in particular at that time uh that that was that was pretty deep for me um and so eventually it turned into bringing more people together uh, and, and 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 one side of the boroughs able to go visit their girlfriend on the other side of the boroughs because hey you're gonna fall in love where from okay <laughs> But you're not allowed to cross over here, otherwise you're gonna fucking get killed. Excuse my language, <laughs> <Sorry>. but <laughs> All right. but, uh, but you, you you're going down, you know. And this is just how it was, you know, at that time uh, before they really saw the light and, uh, and 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 allowed themselves to come together. And the music was the was the, was the game changer. I'd like to know more, really, about that part about you know, who actually, you know, uh, uh, who was the very, very, very first. There were, there were spinners, there were guys that were just playing records and, uh, and, and, and dancing was the street thing. And that, that's what opened it up. That's what brought people wow, together. Wow, this is a, a lot of knowledge. Yeah. A lot of knowledge. We got to. You will find, yeah. you, you'll find this a lot on the video. Uh, this is a Netflix thing too catch but rubble kings not rumble but Rub rubble. rubble like like a like a bunch of you know a bunch of trash a bunch of rocks and you know uh <laughs> all piled up rubble kings is the way is what the, the film is called rubble kings and um it is so it was so informative about uh about how that change came about uh how they got into it, how it started, and then how it changed over into music, and how music itself was the one that healed, that healed all the violence. And uh, wow. it, yeah, that, that, is it, I mean, is this I'm, is this is this post? I'm just trying. Is it like post Last Poets, or, or had Gil Scott Heron taken the scene? Uh, I'm just trying. I'm, I'm, uh, this is all new to you me. Could, it's you know you know that, that I was I was it's feeling like Gil Scott was. Uh, involved uh, was doing his thing. That yeah. is, is what the, the phrase I should use. He was doing his thing at the same time. Yes, this is all seventies. Uh, so 70s. the seventies yeah. were just. It was so unfortunate because it really should have been the gateway towards enlightenment for our country, and it went. Uh, well, I mean, it, it, and it, yeah, it turned into. The, well, I mean, when you when you when you when you look at the experiments yeah. and the things that you know the. Tuskegee and Detroit and you know Flint yes. Flint today yeah. and it's you get to a point yeah. now where it's like uh, I don't want to sound hokey but it, it's to me most of my show 
has, has become about rhythm and rhythm is love, but I just feel like we're losing uh, a lot of love today. Uh, and well, the focus is just changing. You know, all the people are still here, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately mm -hmm. we've lost a, a lot of people, which is, is very, very, very strange, but you know, there's a beginning and an end to everything. But most of the people that are still here, uh, were a part of this or that, whether they're pro, you know, pro this or pro that, what, what, whatever, you know, pro violence or pro division or pro coming together, the, you know, whatever they choose, it's really the focus that we place on it. And, uh, you know, media, you know, we, that, that's a whole other conversation. Uh, right, we're we're only you know, in, we're we, only in set one here, so we're not we don't need to get that deep. But, exactly. You know, but but go on, here's the thing. I want to I want this but, is so go ahead. Fin, you, you can riff on it. Well, well, my point just being is, is that is that you know it's the focus that people um, we as a people need to keep. Uh, uh, I don't want to use the word enforcing, but we have to maintain. Uh, you know the the kind of the kind of life that we we actually want to live. Uh, your brother, to your brother told me, on those things. Yeah, well, I mean, your brother uh, believes that uh, you know maybe a partition in this country. I mean, if if you have a certain uh, Christian Sharia value law that there are certain places in the country that that fits for you, and then if you have a more you know, I mean, I mean, if you know, or you have a more progressive point of view that there are other places that that would be good for you to live i mean that's kind of i don't want it to, i you know i want to keep the the united states together it just seems that there is parallel realities going on now and i'm not well there's the, the the for me i think i think the, the the problem is the is the yearn for control okay there's uh for me my 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 vision of it is is that um you know, power doesn't. You know, power is is not trying to be shared here. Uh, you know, it's it's trying to be maintained in one area and, and then another area. And so, you know, for a, for masses of people who actually are trying to come together, I think it freaks out some of the power bases that are trying to do something else. And so, as a people, through music through all kinds of other artistic endeavors, uh, we are trying to maintain our focus. We're trying to stay there to to actually be able to still be able to cross the street and go into the other borough to visit so-and-so. So it has a chance of, I mean, you, we're, we're, on, we're on the thin line again all of a sudden. Yes. And, I, th I, think, uh, I, think you're I think you're nailing this. And you, I, and you know, and... Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then, and, and then my, my, this is just to stay with this is like, is it now that we are saturated with 24 seven media? I mean, the learning medium for you was, was like you said, it was vinyl records, a couple of TV stations, some newspapers trusted. It was some, you know, it was now you have a, a deluge of information that if you're not a seeker and you just stay on the surface, then you are, go you're not really going to be. I don't know. You wind up you wind up doing things against your best interest. That's the part that bothers that, me. Right, right. And and all I think the, the the one thing I think we just need to to do is really I can't come up with a better phrase at the moment, but is to maintain the focus of what we truly in our hearts in our hearts really want uh, to 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 do how we want to live and how we want to maintain as, as, as people, as friends and as lovers. That is, and it's it just, and just spiritually being alive, you know, not, <laughs> not, not death, not killing that. I mean, I mean, really it's, uh, yeah, I know. music is here and music is very powerful because it can be altered to go into the other direction too. You know, there's, there's, there's we have mounds of music about uh about killing and hurting and violence and this we don't want to go there no just I, yeah that's, just degra that's not yeah. my direction no and it's not no kofi burbridge is 
This is about enlightenment and about inspiration. I, you know, this is, uh, I, right. just, I got to my first uh, Neville brother a couple weeks, uh, Charlie Neville, and he said, uh, I want to read you this and then I want you to riff on it. Because uh, uh, uh-huh. he said, uh, Sonny Stitt told me years ago, man, you got to know your horn. I said, what do you mean I have to know my horn? He said, right. you gotta, he's like, right. he said, he said, you've got to learn all your scales. I told him, I don't want to play no scales. I want to play bebop. He said, look, man, the instrument is constructed based on scales. There's nothing that you can play that doesn't come from the scale. How can you get to play in any key, any song in any key? You learn all the scales. A scale is like a cube. It's got six sides. That's one side of the cube. When you learn the scale up and down, the cube is filled with a bunch of smaller cubes, all the principles and the triads and the seventh, and he just keeps going on and on and on. So, you know, some people would maintain, some cats in that, that like Gary Bartz, who's teaching at Oberlin, you know, he told me back in, when I started my show in 2011, he's like, cats today, their ears are locked. He said their ears are locked, okay? And so to, I'm just curious about if you, in fact, when you first started venturing into the idea, because Tra- Coltrane did this in Philly with Odin Pope and you mm-hmm, know, all these mm-hmm. cats where it was like they would just play scales relentlessly all day long, and then that opened this gateway to being able to play standard tunes in any key. And I'm wondering, I'm like, did Kofi go through something like that where it, you realize that that was truly a gateway towards sonic expansion was learning, not just learning all the scales, but being able to play a, a, a traditional tune, American songbook t- book tune in any key. If I um, would have the orchestral background that I have, you got to know your scales. Period. There is so much music from so many cultures written off of scales but off of the music of their culture. Let's go to uh, let's go to India. They have thirty-two note scales. Right. Okay. They have scales that involve quarter tones, uh, and, and the whole, entire population, the entire culture, is familiar with it. Meaning the musical, the music community. They all know it, really, and their music community really could just be anybody because for India, for for Hindi, the the um, music is the basis, and the it's the basis for for their for the communication for their language. Not meaning that they'll play something that means go over here, go over there, but it reinforces. Um, um, particular ideals about what and who they feel they are and what they feel their life is all about and spiritualism and their spiritualism. And, and, and so the music, uh, so to, for, for them, at least, you know, as an example, they have that kind of scale that is just sung all the time, played all the time, and consequently they can go from tune to tune to tune to tune to tune to tune and just pull it out. Ragas are not written down. They're not notated. Exactly. This They're is exactly where I want it. this is it because yeah. because yeah. I'm telling you, man, yeah. like when they when those jazz the John B. Williams, I don't know if you know that that basis, but uh, he, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so we yes. we had a ball a, a few months ago on the, and he talked about going over with Benny Carter uh, to to uh, Pakistan. He bought a a, a Sarod or a sitar, and he was desperate, exactly. desperately. He was searching for a book on how to play the sitar, and they're like, "No, dude, you you, you know this is." There is no books. Yeah. You know, that's so it's, not how it's I, done. I did. Exactly. And this is so, exactly. this to me is the way what you talked about before so eloquently about merging cultures and how you can, uh, what was the word you used? Retain or, uh, you know, uh, what the focus should be <laughs> on is this idea that they're, that throw away, mm-hmm. throw away the, the, the books. I mean, th- this, this music, it drove Europeans crazy because they could not notate the music. And that was all. Right. It was all passed down from teacher to student. So the the raga. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. It's just that. family. No, but family. But but you're absolutely right. I mean, family to family. That that that's even the deeper side of it is that. Um, who was it? I think Ben Derek taught me this. Uh, 
there was a story about uh, 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 Ravi Shankar mm-hmm. or, or Ali Akbar. Um, one of those musicians was taught to literally, you know, go over a, a rhythm uh, on the road and to practice a certain kind of phrase or rhythm while washing the dishes. <laughs> while, while, well, yeah, you know, you're, you're going to be practicing this while you're cleaning up. You're going to do this while you have chores to do. So they were playing. They were playing like polyrhythms while. They, and they were oh <laughs> practicing. I said to myself, "Wow!" I said, "That is that's intense. That that's some real, real dedication there. Mm. I mean, probably past dedication. You know, I mean, at this point, it's a part of your life. You know, Absolutely. it's a part of your life. Absolutely, it's, it's how you live. You know, and 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 so, uh, you know, music music gets that deep. It, the the, the the, the sound really does go that deep. It uh, starts to move, move situations, move things. You know, that's that when people say it, music can move mountains. Yeah, it can move mountains of ideas, mountains of certain situations, mountains of conflict. I mean, that this is what's going on, um, and that uh, um, it, it's it's been it's been an incredible journey. Really, it has. But mostly just learning about music, not trying to be, you know, hey, competition or look, I got to be a star or, you know, I got to do this career, you know, no, none of that. No, is, none of that. I, I don't know. You got, I mean, this is this is, this is oh, to me, you know, dude, you're wait. So your yeah. your father. Um, yeah, dad is the one. <laughs> he is the one. Well, I mean, I mean, I don't want to leave your mom out, but it's just, I mean, this this mentality, no, well, you know, yeah. it, I mean, this cat is, I mean, what an inspiring cat because one of the L's yeah. on my show is lineage. You know, you trace back to Bill Monroe and Bluegrass or Sam Cooke and Ray Charles and R&B and, yes. and yes. Bird. And, like, to Ralph me. Ralph Stanley, all of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, absolutely. I mean, I'm not, I'm not even exactly. doing justice to it. I, I still am straight. But to me, it's like. Anytime I can get, you know, people think Sly Stone uh, created or, you know, that was the beginnings of funk music. No, no, it was it was Johnny Talbot. Doing, Johnny Talbot exactly. was, doing, you know, and I'm talking to T- Talbot. Those, exactly. These guys are so petrified exactly. to come on my show because they're like, who is this cat that I'm trying to stretch the lineage out? Because it's always. Yeah. And to me, there's a there's a there's a I, kudos to you, man. I mean, seriously. No man, hey, listen, man. Exactly this is a sacred journey. About, uh, exactly, know. dude. No, what I was going to say yeah. is the um, is I, I was the other part of it is there's you know I've talked to Billy Cobb, done about five interviews with with Billy and Cobham and and nice. uh, and I wanted to ask you about there's only two letters that separate uh, magic and music, and you talk about moving mountains of ideas. But do you could you talk about a time on the bandstand when 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 Kofi Burbridge actually you left your physical body. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I, I, or maybe I you th- you saw yourself playing on the side of the stage. He, I mean, Billy told me that when he was the MO, Ma Vishnu was playing at the Olympia theater in Paris. It was the end of an, a grueling tour. They were at the peak of their powers. And it was like the second or, th- you know, it was the second set last set of the tour he was exhausted. Billy's never done a drug in his life either, and he was exhausted. Right, never right, so exhausted, right. and literally, he said that he saw himself playing on the side of the stage. So fatigue played a role with that. But I, you know, th- this is the part of it is like the 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 R word rehearsal and arranging and form- formulaic stuff. I mean, maybe I'm just naive, but I'm just like throw that out the window dude. well well let's not let's 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 include the fatigue let's let's expound on that for a moment let's do it i do i was going to say originally i was going to say no that hasn't happened for me yet <laughs> but but uh um i do remember a moment another fine combination an excellent combination of musicians uh that I have played with, had an opportunity to stick with, didn't didn't do it for other reasons. Uh, but the Jeff Carson Moutet, please, these guys, wow. you're talking about Felix Pastorius, 
uh, at least for my inclusion, when I was included in the combination, uh, it was uh, Felix, Jeff Seipel on drums, um, uh, Jeff Coffin, of course, myself, and another trumpet, uh, a trumpeter, I cannot, uh, for the life of me, uh, uh, and, uh, it's horrible, but his name is Bill. And uh, for, for, for me, we had been doing a tour that, um, I guess it was, you know, five, seven days, uh, but but what we, it was just absolutely a drench. It was cold. It was a, a, just a, a mess of traveling through. And, and there was this one day that we uh, had just been up against the wall with moving around, you know, con- the conditions of the road, this, that, blah, 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 blah. It was wearing us down bad. And then we had to play this bar where there was just nothing but talk, 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 talk. And clearly, you know, the the the, the, uh, the clientele was not interested in what we, we Right. It was, they didn't. Uh, okay. I, oh, boy. Yeah, so that, that always. We, yeah. So, yeah. So that's <laughs> another added weight unless you get around that thought. It just weighs down on you. It's, it's a weight. It really does. And and you're like, oh, God, so we got to go through this, you know. And we were so tired. And and I remember being so exhausted personally, just myself, that once we started playing, um, there, there, was, there was just for me to tune into Jeff Sipe at the time. And then it just went around the room from Jeff to Felix to, you know, rhythm section, of course, for me. Because I'm playing mostly keyboards, and then you have Bill on trumpet, and then you have Jeff Coffin, and just because we have been doing the material so much, and because of, of the you know intrusion of, of of what we were going through that week, just to travel, um, for some reason, I kind of felt like I, I just I didn't blank out. But all of a sudden, some things were just automatically happening by themselves. And and I, I kind of was able to watch it, so to speak. Even though I'm, I'm seeing myself playing, I'm there playing, and I'm not out of my body or across the room or something like that. But it was a chance to actually just let things happen, and it was so cool. It was, I mean, the best stuff came out from, I guess, being exhausted um and maybe exhaustion isn't isn't really what's doing it it the exhaustion allowed us to relax to a certain point where we just weren't thinking about anything else we were thinking about anything else and just playing and just getting into it and it was just one of the best moments of my life i'll never forget that it was it was such a different experience altogether and uh, Derek, uh, when when I play with TTB, you know, um, there's moments where he, where where I can tell he wants this to happen. We're trying to include more material now. Where, yes, it there's structure to it. Um, we want to still be able to feature different people uh, in the group, but we also want to feature different kinds of playing. And different kinds of music, yes, but different kinds of playing, the motion that's actually going on stage. Mm, mm. Not so much, i.e., uh, just the solo guitar or just Susan singing or just featuring me on flute or just featuring uh, 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 one, of, one of the background singers or one of the horn players or... Um, you know, we wanted to open it up. You know, there's moments where we actually feature... Um, uh, was two moments at least from the time that I've been playing because of this other thing that went down in my heart. Um, uh, the uh, solos done by JJ and and Tyler Greenwell, Falcon, both of these guys. It is such a treat to watch them play because I, I kind of say this about O'Teal as well and about many of the who are able to, quote-unquote, 
find this railroad track. Now, even though a railroad <laughs> what's track the, What's is the railroad track? Like, I need to know what the railroad the, track the, is. <laughs> the railroad track for me is just being able to all of a sudden sync up with some kind of energy uh, that allows you to just go here, there, blah, 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 and whatever you do damn near works. And you're a, you're really able to speak and say some things and and musically, you know, like you're watching it go down, you're hearing it go down. And those two guys uh, really, really, really are, are very good at being able to just give in to that, to, just to allow themselves to get on the track. But it, but, but, and, and maybe I'm, I'm, you know, describing it incorrectly, but that's what it feels like. It feels like they tune into a frequency almost, and that it just happens. They, uh, you're absolutely you're 100. No, I mean, Stanley Clark. Yeah, it's the frequency, play, man. It's the frequency, right. yeah. man. I mean, there's. Yeah. He said that uh, uh, Stanley told me that uh, uh, he was talking about playing spiritual music because that's kind of what we're talking about. And and uh, he right. said he said in order to do that, Wayne Shorter. That he said that one night he was playing with him and Omar Hakim. And uh, they had a few drinks, and then they were at the bar afterwards. And <laughs> Wayne said, "You have to process this for a minute." He said, um, "You know, playing trans, you know, playing spiritual music is like going to the store to get your grandmother some milk." <laughs> <laughs> so it's I that get it. you know, it's a, it's it's like a devotional thing, but but it's it, it's also like. Uh, do do you yeah. find? I mean, I haven't seen. Totally I haven't seen TTB in in a minute, but I mean, do you guys focus? Is there an emphasis? I know it's not. You're not. It's not exactly Ron Carter and Tony Williams, but do you guys focus on breaking up time and form in the music? I mean, that was really. Some um, of, that was, is that is what's happening now. It is. You know, ever since ever ever since the latter years yes. of, of TTB. Um, there's been um, it, the music just wants to grow. That's what I really, really, really dig about Derek. Derek wants to grow. Mm -hmm. He's trying to grow and keep his audience. Okay, we, you know we can't just go there because we have a, 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 it's a broad audience. It will confuse some people. They will run if we take off the way we know we can take off. But however, you know <laughs> he's, he's he's working it out and and. Uh, and I really dig that part that's that side of him. Uh, I think that's what keeps me so interested in the whole thing is that um, is that he is, is always so willing to explore, you know, the, the different kind, the different sides of playing. Um, you know, we have to have a song or, or a piece of music that introduces that. But once we get into it, you know, we've got the audience. I mean, you you know, you know. Yes, you can choose to leave if if you want to, but we've got you now. You know, we've got you there, and so, you know, it it, uh, it either will grow on you or it will turn you off. And for the most part, I think the audience is is learning more and more and more and more and more. And it's just really really cool to to uh, see him introducing this. And uh, to try and go in that direction. So well, I was going to yeah. say because I mean, I remember when uh, uh, David Nelson was telling me a story about sitting behind the, the speaker stacks at, uh, I guess it was the Grateful Dead were still the Warlocks, and they were they were asked the produ the promoter right. the promoter was like you know Jerry can you just play you know this pop tune because the audience recognizes it and they're really going to love it and you know it's, exactly and and Jerry's yeah. like what what's the what's the use and then so they started really. They, they started out really just having one law. They would have one psychedelic jam. Not everything would be, you know, every, you play this, you know, not out. But do you feel like are you are there do you have a traditional two set kind of thing? Or is there really one part of the show where you're trying to sort of uh, just expand the vocabulary? I think it goes. I think it goes both ways. It goes both ways. There are nights we have two sets. There are nights that we play straight through. Most most of the time we play you know, an hour 45 or two hours. Um, and, and there have been two set nights. Uh, and the two set nights, actually, it all depends. Once again, I got to say, it depends on, on the crowd. That sure. We see. You got to play to the crowd. You know, yeah, absolutely. because no matter what, if that's what they want to hear, we're ready to go there, you know. 
Now, now breaking up the set gives us a chance to relax, although it cuts the frequency, right? So it's it, there's a pro and con to the whole thing when when you do two sets. But once once we're into that phase of just playing straight through for you know two hours. Uh, you're already in it. You're already in it. There's nothing to break you. We're, I mean, like in 10 seconds or 15 seconds, we're going no more than that. <laughs> we're going on to the next tune, no matter how long it is. So so tune after tune after tune, you know, the playing is growing on you The uh, and us. I mean, it's two-way street, you know. The, the one thing I say a lot is, damn it, we never get to – to see our show. What do you mean? Because what? we're always doing the damn show, you know? I, I would love a perspective sometimes. So oh, I dig. 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 Now, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that's where the out-of-body experience comes in, if you can see yourself on the yeah, side. Yeah, if we can do that, right. Um, but, you know, getting back to, to the other point, um, um, we do have those moments of... Uh, uh, of being able to break free of structure, so to speak. And one of those tunes is called The Storm. Now, it mainly is a pseudo, quote-unquote, trio-style tune, where what I mean is, is that Susan and I are performing the tune with with the rhythm section. There's no horns, no background vocals. Right. Okay? But uh, then it gets to a point where... You know, the solos begin. It's really Derek, um, you know, working his thing. And and it really, the the style of the tune and, and, and what it could allow, for me, I felt like it was a moment for uh, the band to really feature a trio-style moment, even though there's two drummers. So you have Derek, Tim, and Falcon, and JJ. And at least for a good, I mean, a good three minutes, four minutes, you know, which is, you know, really stretching it out there, these guys throw down. And you can really hear uh, the that whole... Um, uh, ambience of the of the trio of the 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 I, I'll, any trio allows you to explore, but in this case, rock trio, okay, right, and, right, and they really, really, really go for it, and and you know, I I, I choose to Susan and I choose to leave the stage, and, uh, and and we'll just check it out, and it's just, I mean, they do some cool stuff. They do some really cool stuff, and the time does, um, um, I would say, the meter changes um, as far as, you know, it feels like it's 4-4, okay. J.J. will be one of the first, and Falcon is so damn responsive. He really is extremely fast. But both of them will, like, turn make you feel like the one is somewhere else and then all of a sudden it's a completely different meter you're you're either doing something at six or the meter is seven or the meter is a combination of 13 you know this is how however they place it you know and tim is right on top of it and Derek is right on top of it and it is just absolutely wonderful to listen to um you know yeah yeah so so they 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 will do that every once in a while. <laughs> well, I, I this is uh, I just want to this is uh, this is how I I mean I this kind of came out my came out of my interview with I was I, I thought I had inter I had transcribed everything from my interview with your brother, but then I'm listening back a few weeks ago uh, and I transcribed this and you know this is not to be sappy. Mm -hmm. I want you to I, 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 I genuinely want you to to counter this by by uh in what how whatever comes to your mind he said um mm -hmm. he said uh, I, a lot of music was going on in dc that was uh that was not on the streets i was too young to check it out i had great teachers on drums on piano on bass clarinet and i taught myself bass i learned enough of the classical method on a lot of instruments to teach myself kofi 
was at such an advanced stage of playing at such a young age. He really helped me a lot because I thought that was normal. I thought that was the mark you had to hit, not realizing he was super advanced. He got my ear together really well, just trying to keep up with him. What I'm still trying to do is keep up with him, and I have not caught him by any stretch. You have these marks you set for yourself, and it's been a benchmark that I've had since I was five. I'm super, super grateful for him, especially now, because I know better now. But, you know, both of you, uh, or at least Othiel, both of you, I mean, the music industry, just the, the business, is it, it's so up and down, and you can find yourself having the most transcendent, incredible experience, and then you have a clunker the next night, or you're just kind of discouraged by the whole business part of it. And, and you know, sure, so, so he's sure. talking about you and your feel, time feel, your facility, your, you know, almost the, the nat, what you were gifted with. And, and I'm going to turn it around and say, what have you learned most from O'Teal? Well, damn near the same thing. O'Teal <laughs> has, has taught me, O'Teal has taught me freedom. O'Teal has taught me freedom. O'Teal has, has, um, uh, you know, I, I came up, from. Uh, Oh God! Let's see. I was uh, so classically oriented at an early age. Really, the, the flute—I uh, can remember flute lessons. Okay, get this piece together for next week. Get this piece together for next week. And this was Mozart. This was Bach. This was Vivaldi. Wow. This was you know things on that level. Wow. And and I was seven eight nine years old okay this is just what and i'm not alone there's other students that had to do the same thing it's just what level are you uh ready to take it to how serious are you you know uh times your parents are spending ten dollars every half hour that they didn't have okay at the time to do this because they have faith in you to go ahead and do this, right? So, so that that that's basically uh, what got the ball rolling uh, until I was actually fell in love with the music. Um, the music was attractive to me at the time, and I was having fun learning all the riffs and all that stuff. But I still wanted to race Hot Wheel cars. Okay. <laughs> So yeah. my head was not there yet. I wasn't really truly there until I went to the School of the Arts. And even just, but maybe a few years before then. I remember one moment uh, uh, that uh, a friend of mine, his name is David Moses, and uh, it was a uh, you know, school, schoolmate of mine uh, who was into drums uh, and... Um, and had a set, and he was uh, in McLean, Virginia, and would set up all the time. And this, 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 at the top of the interview, this is kind of what I was referring to, is that he would set up uh, little house parties for us, for O'Teal and I both to come over and jam with him. And 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 that was, you know, during the time where where I was actually in two worlds, you know, learning uh, my lessons for next week but then being able to go over and just jam and and O'Teal was learning bass at the same time O'Teal O'Teal reads music O'Teal knows bass clef chapel clef uh, we just don't have situations that that demand that we read right now and maybe that'll come back up again and we'll have to get our, our, our thing together okay but but um, he um, was so free. And O'Teal, by the way, this really will clear everything up because <laughs> it's not. And this is, I'm surprised I even left this out. Yeah. Uh, O'Teal is originally a drummer. Period. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. O'Teal was originally a drummer. In case anyone doesn't know that the o o that that is where O'Teal really, really, really comes from, and then it went to the bass. Okay, O'Teal practiced on my bass when I went to the School of the Arts. We explored all the instruments. Was he? We both was I just, I wanna, I, I just, he played bass clarinet? No, I just want to be clear though. He he was he. It was it was the. 
it was not was it was it a trap set or was it just heavy African drums? If, if and he may no no it was a set it was and, a and I, set, yeah. he may cor- he may correct me on this. I thought it was a, a, a pearl, but it was a, clearly a sparkling blue set uh-huh. of drums <laughs> that that uh, that he that, that and he was on top of it. Oteil was, you know, Oteil was playing every day. Uh, was he playing like a was he playing that. like a rock bottom with a jazz top? Like was he doing that? I mean, was he doing? Oh uh, no, no. We, 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 you know what, what? What we had were the recordings upstairs, and then we would come downstairs and just try different things. Oh, I love so this. Where are the like, rec- we get like, the recordings out immediately of this y- stuff? Dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, because I mean, it it went it it went from um, I remember uh, Brand X. Sure. Uh, we, I remember. Yeah. We, we, oh God. Yeah. That Mike they, Clark they, played they, drums they, with them for a minute. Yeah. Well, and then, but Brand X was also. Uh, what was, oh God, this is embarrassing. Was it Phil Collins. Phil Collins was. We knew. We knew about Phil Collins before all of this. Exactly. You know, Dude, badass. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. totally. Badass. I mean, to us, Phil Collins was Brand X. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's and true. Then that's when right. We saw him cross <laughs> over into the other thing. It was like what? It's like okay, <laughs> all right. That's what you want to do yeah. now, yeah. okay? Yeah. You yeah. know, we're still coming from the instrumental side. Oh, absolutely. Thing, yeah. You know? No, I know. And and uh, but but uh, uh, Bill Bruford, you know, there was a, there, there was a, uh, a handful of that, and then Mahavishnu, of course. That I mean, these are all the things that are coming to my head that I remember now. Um, you know, we 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 were, we were really on top of a lot of but it's fair to say that you would go down and you were he was playing traps and you were actually playing bass and oh yeah and keyboards a lot of that wow there was an upright piano in the house that our our parents bought uh when i was seven uh dad always this is the biggest part this is probably the biggest part that has no sense of time or pitch he dad cannot he 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 mocks dancing. I mean, he'll dance with my mom and be way off the beat and just smile. And I have a good time love it, dude. And he's, he's, he's got his and own time uh, in his head, man. He, oh, my yes, God, he, man. He has no <laughs> time, you know. But he loved culture. Thank God, man. Myth, oh, know? my God. <laughs> Legend. And, uh, and so, you know, we often wondered, you know, what happened at conception. But, you know, um, it, it, it's, it was... That was how we came up. Was was really listening to um, the material uh, our dad had all over the house, and uh, and eventually really just copying it and then trying to find our voice in the whole thing. And uh, and that uh, that pretty much is that pretty much is our story. And then when I went away to school. Um, which was really hard because you know it separated us, and then and, and for me, I knew that life was going to really change uh, at that point. Now, this for me, that was fourteen, fifteen. Uh, like I said, North Carolina School of the Arts, but even before then, it was Eastern Music Festival uh, in Greensboro, Guilford College. Um, Went Marsalis was even uh, attending that for summer summer camps, summer programs at the time, but I think that was his last year. And then he just went on, and mm. his his life had changed, uh, and, and went into other things. But yeah, and you yeah, and and, and the, the other thing is that you 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 knew that um, going back to the the teacher student, the Alaraka, Zakir Hussein, the African, right. the idea of playing with the family, then you, because you got, you reconnected with Knee Deep. Is that when you got back with Oteil? Once you... Uh, now, Knee Deep, well, Knee Deep came about because of, uh, because of a recommendation from a friend from school. Right. And, and, um, uh, and he said, hey, you know, this gig, uh, you know, this is actually when I was graduating. So, you know, that was part of the whole deal, too. You know, he knew I was coming out of school and looking for work. And he said, hey, here's, here's a band that actually was trying to do some things. Uh, but it wasn't me deep. It was a group called Kid Shaleen. Kid Shaleen 
is a character out of the movie Cat Baloo, Henry Fonda and some other people. <laughs> this guy couldn't shoot straight unless unless he had some drinks. Okay, right. if he was sober, he would kill you by accident. It was all over the place, you know. <laughs> but if he was drunk, on the mark. Okay, and uh, and and so you know that was a group I had joined. Uh, now we, I would say 83, let me get it right. Yes, that was 83, 84. I was in that group for maybe eight to nine months. Um, and then from there, I, uh, there was, you know, some of the circuits we have been doing, um, well, the whole circuit was a beach circuit up and down the East coast from Ocean City, Maryland, all the way down to, to Florida. Um, uh, there was one show in Miami Beach, uh, but I think uh, most of it went to like Panama City, uh, Jacksonville, and then back up to back up the coast through Carolinas, Virginia. Uh, that was that was that was uh, that was pursuing work. That was top forty. Top. 40. When's the last time you heard that? Well, I that mean, was, that's <laughs> yeah, but then and right. so you were just I was going to say what was the that, that was you were appealing to people that were coming to see a specific I was yeah. just looking for work, man. I did. And got to sing through supper, you know? for work. Yeah. yeah, and and uh and uh, but the musicians in the group, they were also hip to all all sorts of music. Um the bass player Bobby Squires is passed now. Um, he had, and and Sam Guest, another singer, uh, who's in Myrtle Beach right now. Those two were tightly, tightly uh, um, in connection uh, with uh, with uh, uh, Weather Report. I I mean I, I've seen I've seen at least two or three shows with those guys. Wow! Uh, wow. It was amazing wow. to to and for me that opened my head up even more to find out that, hey, just because of the gig you're doing doesn't mean that you don't know this or you don't know that. So that blew that out of the water. <laughs> that was big time, you know, because I'm thinking, like, you know, if you play funk, then that's all you know. Well, no, Kofi, you're wrong. <laughs> well, and, yeah, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the older cats would say that oh my you need gosh, to have the rudiments yeah. of, of, you know, in order, you can't just play funk. If you don't, if you don't learn the lin, if you don't learn the other musics that came before, there was no, there was no music called funk back in the day. I mean, you'd say right. they'd say, let's say, let's play something, let's play something funky, or let's play a a, blue, a funky blues. Exactly. But there was let's no funk music. Funky. Yeah. There it, you go. All right. Yeah. But if you just grow up with funk, then you're not going to grow. Yeah. You're you're stunting yourself. That's the you know. Listen, right. we one listen set one here. We've been cooking over eighty minutes here, but um. And right, having a right. ball, but I just I wanted you to talk about um, if you f final question for you here in set one, Kofi uh, is um, if, if you could talk about uh, if you feel like younger cats today, not in a broad brush, but um, a lot of a lot of the peeps will say that that you know if you're starting out as a musician now or you're, you're you've been in it for a while, you might only go back to soul jazz rebirth of the mid 90s when there was that kind of rebirth of it i know you've played with soul live or they might go back to a shuffle from toto uh -huh. from toto like the uh -huh. late or you, you dig like late 70s sure. but instead of going back to a fats domino solo or instead of going back to the boogaloo of of lou donaldson and idris muhammad do you feel that younger cats are going back far enough back in the lineage in order to really be able to play music and play melodically, not just like for instance, with a drummer, not just keeping time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but playing the song, those old school drummers that you listen to from those jazz records that your dad had on the wall, they all, first of all, they all had their own, own, own individual sound, but they also played the mm -hmm. tune. They weren't just timekeepers. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, do you think, cat, exactly. do you think cats go back far enough now? And if so, what, would be your advice because, like I said, there's a deluge of information today. I still collect vinyl. You know, I'm finding like Coast Guard, you know, Dream Along with the Coast Guard Steel Band, and it's just like the most like they're playing Green Sleeves and they're playing all this crazy stuff. So I'm sort of in mm -hmm. my own unique bubble. But for the regular cat 
who's searching for individual sound. Yes. How do they go? Yes. How should they seek and know when they found something in the lineage that goes? I mean, it goes back. It's 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 a bit harder now. Uh, once again, I can use uh, the the phrase because and because of the focus. Okay. Yes. This is this is uh, we've got a lot of gravity coming from these industries. We really do. Oh. Uh, they're they're weighing down on on the interest, the 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 uh, possibilities within, within the interest, and so. To begin with, uh, that person that is actually seeking that stuff has to really, 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 really want to. Okay, right. that that That's is right. the first thing. That's right. But then, but then, um, you know, go out and seek these recordings from those time periods and listen to the source. If it's if it's a particular artist or a particular sound that you that that you've heard about. Or that, and it's so much easier now with with YouTube, uh, which is really, really. I, I mean, I've, I found some things on there I didn't think I'd ever find again. I agree, but you um, have to know. You have to be a seeker. That's but you have to, yeah. You have to. You have to. You, know, you have to actually look for that source and find that piece of music, and you really can't get around that. You have to actually hear it. You have to hear what it is that's actually, you know, that created that style, that created that, uh, you know, that, that, that interest that you're looking for. And, uh, and then once you hear it and once you find it, uh, just do like, do like any other study type of thing. Copy it. Try to copy it. Learn it. Transcribe it if you need to. Uh, and then take it a step further, which is, which is, Try to understand life behind it, you know. Uh, you know, a, a lot of a lot of the music was was inspired because of just a sign of the times. Just, uh, I mean, they were playing from, you know. I, I go back to Coltrane on a lot of this, uh, you know, what they call modern jazz and this and that. That was a movement. It wasn't just modern jazz. That was a movement. Well, it's incredible you bring this up. No, you're nailing it because he, it was, what's amazing is that white journalists like myself were labeling, like with Getz in the early 60s, before Girl from Ipanema, Mm -hmm. you read the back of liner notes. There's a session with Bill Evans and Getz and the rhythm section was Art, Ron C, Elvin, and and, and, and whatever, and, and like Tommy Flanagan. And it's like, there were two schools of music. There was this lilting, melodic, pretty sound of Getz, and what they and then they termed Coltrane's music angry message music. It yeah. was completely <laughs> exactly. misinterpreted. It was completely misinterpreted. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It, 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 and yeah. so, um, but different experience is what it was. It was an experience, yeah. right. but it was also about bringing mm-hmm. humans, humanity together, which is what the corporate gravity won't allow us to do. Right. Right. No, they're they're constantly trying to control the whole thing. Uh, uh, you know, I can't call any names, but I do remember moments of, of uh, well, can we get a new band for you, Derek Trucks? And Derek like postponed something for a whole year. It was like, no, we're not going to allow wow, that. Wow, I did. <laughs> well, even even live. And, listen, you uh, go around, you go, you see it. Live Nation controls not ninety percent of the venues look the same now. I mean, there's no right. like, there's no like funky little, you know, whatever. It's just it's a very formulaic. It, it, to me, it's it's it can be, and like you said, then when you when you also couple that with a with an audience that's there to to talk as opposed to having a spiritual experience, that makes it even harder. I mean, right. the point the point is when you when you when you think that music is made for pacification instead of burning. Uh, I mean, I right. want my daughters to grow up burning burning music right playing and, right. and and receiving so we i mean at the end of the day um i i just also wanted to say have you has anything taken on obviously you want to mend although i think you have you been on the bandstand recently with your brother that he was leading some kind of festival as actually not yet uh you know i just came out of uh uh uh, heart dissection, man, and uh, just briefly, you know, I'm, I'm extremely grateful to even be able to do this interview. Uh, 
Me too. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I did, I mean, and yeah. uh, and things are going extremely well. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a combination of uh, uh, technology and so some Olympiad surgeons and just a just a just a love that's that's come from all the fans. There's been a lot of posting uh, of get wells and and things like this, and, and I'm just a firm very very strong believer in prayer and uh, i think all of that you know, has kept me together to the point where uh you know i i would like to uh, to do some playing but i haven't done any performances uh in like the last three months i've just i've actually been in recovery uh but O'Teal has given me some calls about some dates in the future uh, and uh, hopefully I will have my my thing together, and I'll I'll be ready uh, to to make those. And I feel good right now to tell you the truth. Well, I'm, you sound. I'm ready. I mean, I, I'm ready to go on the road now. <laughs> yeah, well, you but know, I, all, instance, I guess my I I, I, yeah. I can't uh, do anything to concentrate on the chest or stuff like that. Blah blah blah. It, you know, setting. Like, let's just say that uh, the. Either this never happened, or you you have a full recovery, um, which I we all hope and, and pray for. Is uh, the question is, I had a misconception for a long time that musicians get on the bandstand and they're searching for that bliss moment when everything is, like you said, the music's playing you, it's coming through the from the heavens through you, and you're in a bliss state. And then I talked to uh, Krishna Das, uh, the the Hindu chanter. And he said, uh-huh. and he said that uh, his story is different, uh, as everybody's is. But he's like, I don't sing. Excuse my language. I don't sing to fucking uh, for bliss. He goes, I sing so I don't fucking die. And what he was really, uh-huh. you know, and, and it was yeah. more. And, and you know, I've talked to a lot of cats on the circuit, your age and older. Uh, uh-huh. But also, just like my question is, if just setting aside your health. Because you had, I mean, it's it's a it's a miracle that you're still with us. It's a miracle Joni Mitchell's still with us. I mean, there's these are right. like you know huge right. things. If you didn't have music, would Kofi Burbridge die spiritually? Uh yes, yes. Um, I think music is necessary for my well-being. Um, I, I, I almost think it would be. Um, it would be a brain change. It would be a, a brain wave change, brain wave change. Uh, if, um, if, if I allowed music not to, um, affect me or inspire me in the ways that it does right now, uh, my personality would change. Maybe the personality would lead to lead to other behaviors uh, or neglect certain behaviors. Uh, it, it might uh, make me, I would. I this, this is just without <laughs> without knowing what it would do. This is what I think it would do. Uh, no, I appreciate I, when it you. Would, it would. Yeah, it I, would change me to that point. Absolutely. I, I mean, you know, um, the the health. Music definitely um, affects the health. It is, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, uh, and directly it does. Like at that very moment, um, you, you, I, I come across people who need, who absolutely, are in need. They just don't want to, or hey, I have the time off, or something like this. They actually need to hear certain kinds of music. And at a certain at a certain rate, you know, like uh, we have many people who who uh, and and as with all kinds of bands, uh, there's there's many fans that follow follow uh, shows constantly. If if they can afford it, they will go from one place to another to another to another. Now there's combinations of reasons why they do this. Obviously, there's different reasons but i run into many people mostly who just need to hear it they just need to be there they need to feel the amps they need to feel the sound come through them or if they're in a club they just need for the ambience to be a certain way and they just need those moments it 
does something to the the, the whole physically it, it affects it but I, th- I think it activates something in the brain that begins to heal the rest of the body when you, so you say you, say, you uh, say they, but you also mean you can first. I mean people. Just you mean first person. Whoever. You I mean you too. Though. Yeah, yeah, per person is exactly yeah. what I mean. Per, yeah. per, per, per person. You know, whether 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 it, it, it could be metal, okay, and, and, <laughs> and which would you know, or to I I'm just gonna tell you I can't take too much of it. No. But I can go to a few shows, all right. <laughs> but there are people who need that. There are people who need this vibration all the time, all the time. It does something for them. It, it keeps them, you know, grounded in whatever area they're trying to be grounded in, and um, and that's and that's you know part of that's part of the health, you know, whatever that is. Um, these different experiences, you know. Papa, Papa can dance. Yeah. Papa Burbridge can dance, but he certainly raised some amazing. <laughs> uh, sp- I mean, honestly, man, I, 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 it's been invigorating for a long time. I was uh, I- interviewing the Joe Chambers and the Jack Dejanets and the Dave Hollins, and I and I continue to do so. Right. But but to really connect with my own peer group and to know that the, that there's a cyclical quality in this, and th- and that to see the peeps that are going to be. The ones to well, listen. I have yeah. checked out your, your 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 Facebook site, and just to to see the <laughs> the people that you you are so serious about it, man. I, I really uh, commend you on that. You have you have uh, interviewed so many people, and you've been you know so concentrated, and so interested in in uh, so many different types of music. Uh, that that's that's definitely what i'm all about well you know I what really it, well, let's that. let's do it again soon man I, 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 time, man. I and uh i had a ball with you man and uh i'll get you a copy of this yeah, later absolutely. and uh much love to you man keep it going and just t- take care of yourself and uh and keep inspiring yeah, absolutely when we and when we get out that way we'll hook up well i mean dude everybody listen tucson get is the it's just always the orphan child we were not on route 66 we need <laughs> I, I mean i i need i want to i want to get a burbridge concert promotion thing going immediately out here <laughs> we could do that yeah man. we'll do that <laughs> much love man listen have a great day and uh you know i'll be glad bla- i'll be transcribing some of these stories and blasting them out later man so much love to you right man. On. all right all right Thanks so much to you and to you and to you, your fans, man. Yeah, press on, man. Really good doing the interview. Thanks so much. Later on, Kofi. All right, Kofi. Bye bye. Right, peace. 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 Amazing in- musician, probably a better human being, Kofi Burbridge. Big thanks to my boss, Jim Parisi, for getting everything back up and running here on Power Talk. We'll be back tomorrow with some in studio guests, Danny Krieger playing guitar and singing tunes. And uh, Howard Scott from War. It's going to be a heavy week. It already has been. Until then, take care. Peace.